Abe Ahmed, Ethiopia's Prime Minister. Abe Ahmed Ali, Bazari Ulet, Legamagistu, and Alagawano. Abi Ahmed, full name Abi Ahmed Ali, was born in Beshaha, a coffee farming district in southwestern Ethiopia, to Christian and Muslim parents as he quickly became known as someone capable of uniting an increasingly divided country. Abi is a Christian who practices Pentecostalism. He drew the attention of protesting youths who demanded greater political inclusion as the country's first ethnic or Romo leader in recent years. He told the country exuding youthful exuberance. His approachability contrasted with his predecessor's intimidating distance, and for many ordinary citizens he met on his frequent trips, he was unlike any recent leader they had met. Nonetheless, he was an insider. He served in the military, rising to the rank of lieutenant colonel. Abi fought against the Dirk regime that ruled Ethiopia from 1974 to 1991, and he later served in the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, rising to the rank of lieutenant colonel. He earned a bachelor's degree in computer engineering from Microlink Information Technology College in Addis Ababa in 2001 while serving in the military. In 2007, he became the country's Information Network and Security Agency's founder and director in charge of cyber security in a country where the government had tight control over the internet. He later became the Minister of Science and Technology. Welcome to Think Rich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship rather than global PT is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Abi was elected to the House of People's Representatives in 2010 as a member of the Oromo People's Democratic Organization, which was part of the ruling Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. In the years since, he has received a master's degree in transformational leadership from the International Leadership Institute in Addis Ababa, in collaboration with Greenwich University in London, a master's degree in business administration from Leeds Star College of Management and Leadership, in collaboration with Ashland University in Ohio, and a doctorate from Addis Ababa University's Institute for Peace and Security Studies. Abi was appointed Minister of Science and Technology in the federal government in 2016 but he left in October of that year to become Vice President of the Oromia Regional Government. Abi was elected Secretary General of the OPDO Party in 2017. Meanwhile, in 2015, the Romo people protested a contentious plan proposed by the EPRDF-led federal government to enlarge Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa by connecting it to parts of the Romia region. More protests occurred in the Romia and other regions the following year, fueled by a broader range of grievances against the government. Early in 2018, the government began making overtures to defuse tensions and promote dialogue with opposition groups, following Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dezanlin's unexpected resignation in February, Abi emerged as a leading candidate to succeed him. Abi was elected chair of the OPDO party in February 2018, putting him in line to become chair of the EPRDF ruling coalition, which he did on March 27. The House of People representatives elected him prime minister on April 2nd, the same year and he was sworn in on the same day. Notably, Abi was the first Oromo to hold the position of Prime Minister and it was hoped that his election would help to ease the remaining tensions between the Oromo people and the government. At the age of 41, he became Prime Minister for the first time in 2018 under anti-government protest. His youthful vitality and bright smile offered hope. Abi made immediate efforts to bring about dramatic changes in the democratic process, the economy and the resolution of the people's long-standing border conflict with Eritrea. Thousands of political prisoners were released in his first year and some opposition groups were removed from the government's list of terrorist organizations. He later signed a peace treaty with some of the groups, bringing the Ogaden more than 30 years of conflict to an end. Measures were also unveiled to encourage investment and boost economic growth. Abi formed a new cabinet that was notable not only for its smaller size but also for the number of women Abi appointed, resulting in the country's first gender balanced cabinet. He supported the woman for president, established gender parity in the cabinet and established a peace ministry. The Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, the coalition that Mr. Abi leads that which is currently in power, 
was well into its third decade in power and had been plagued by allegations of repression and violations of human rights. This included the confinement of political opponents and the muzzling of journalists. The EPRDF was responsible for the rapid expansion of the economy, but many people felt that they were left out of the benefits of this expansion. A wave of protest was fueled by the perception that members of the country's largest ethnic group, the Oromo, were being discriminated against because of their ethnicity. Mr. Abe, who is Oromo himself, was elevated to the position of Prime Minister and immediately began addressing concerns amidst a whirlwind of reforms after being put in charge. He freed thousands of political prisoners, removed restrictions on the oppression of independent media organizations, and extended invitations to return to the country from exiled opposition groups that had previously been banned in the nation. The most important accomplishments that Abiy and the government that he leads under the leadership of the EPRDF have accomplished is making significant headway in the search for peace with Eritrea and reopening the common border. On June 5, 2018, Abiy announced that Ethiopia would be adhering to the terms of the peace agreement that had been signed in 2000 to put an end to the border war that had begun in 1998 between Ethiopia and Eritrea. This included accepting and implementing the 2002 ruling that had previously been rejected by Ethiopia that had demarcated the border between the two countries. The following month, Abiy traveled to Eritrea to meet the president of that country, Isaiah Safweki. In addition to reopening their country's borders, the two heads of state agreed to revive relations between their countries in the fields of diplomacy, commerce, communications, and transportation. After this, on July 9th, Abiy and Isaiah issued a momentous joint statement in which they declared an end to the state of war that had existed between their two countries for the previous 20 years. This state of war had been ongoing between the two nations. Abi was also involved in the resolution of other conflicts in the region. He served as a mediator in conflicts between Eritrea and Djibouti, between Kenya and Somalia, and in the conflict that was going on internally in Sudan. During his tour of the nation, Abi gave speeches focused on unifying the diverse population of Ethiopia. He came up with a new political philosophy that he called Medema which was designed to promote a feeling of national unity despite the existence of ethnic divisions. In addition to this, he desired to honor the various cultures. He gained widespread popularity in part as a result of the profound shifts that took place in the nation, but a significant portion of his appeal was also due to the story about his own life. Abiy was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 for his work toward easing tensions along Ethiopia's border with Eritrea. The award was given in recognition of his efforts. Not everyone in Ethiopia was ready to accept such change, which allowed simmering ethnic tensions to come to the forefront. Although Abiy's overtures and reform efforts were welcomed and applauded by many, not everyone in Ethiopia was ready to accept such change. In 2018, there were numerous large rallies held in support of the reforms proposed by the Prime Minister. A grenade was thrown at a stage where Abiy was speaking during a rally in June 2018. But then, he was unharmed in the incident. However, two other people lost their lives and dozens more were injured. Several high-ranking officials were killed in what the government has described as a botched attempt at a coup that occurred in June 2019 and was centered in the Amhara region. Late in 2019, Abiy advocated for the four constituent parties of the EPRDF to dissolve the coalition and replace it with a single party that would also include some of the smaller ethnic groups that had not been part of the EPRDF. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, which had for a long time been the most powerful member of the EPRDF coalition before Abiy took office, had already seen its power diminish under Abiy's prime ministership. And it took some issues now with the process of dissolving the coalition and refused to participate in it. Abiy formed the Prosperity Party, which included the other three parties that had been a part of the EPRDF, as well as several smaller ethnic-based parties that had opted to disband and join Abiy's new party after the EPRDF was dissolved. Despite this, the EPRDF was dissolved and Abiy formed the Prosperity Party. However, because the general elections in 2020 were officially postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the new political party's metal has not yet been immediately tested at the polls. The election delay became a point of contention in some quarters, with the TPLF and other opposition leaders accusing Abiy of attempting to extend his mandate. Despite the official postponement, the Grand officials held elections in September 2020. In response, the federal government withheld funds from the region the following month. Tensions boiled over in the early November when TPLF forces were accused of attacking federal military bases in Tigray, prompting federal forces to invade the region. Even though skirmishes continued, federal troops captured Tigray's capital, Mekele, later that month, and Abiy declared victory. 
Eritrean troops controversially participated in the conflict, attacking Tigrayan forces. Although Eritrean and Ethiopian officials initially denied the presence of Eritrean troops in the conflict, Abiy later acknowledged their participation. The Prosperity Party won an overwhelming majority of parliamentary seats in the postponed general elections in June 2021. Meanwhile, in the Tigray regional conflict, Tigrayan forces went on the offensive and launched attacks on the advance toward Mekele, which they recaptured on June 28. Despite a unilateral ceasefire declared by the federal government that day, fighting continued and spread to the other regions, leaving Abiy with an escalating conflict and a growing humanitarian crisis. Winning the Nobel Peace Prize in October 2019 for finally breaking the 20-year stalemate with Eritrea solidified its international standing. However, the war in Ethiopia's Tigray region has resulted in a rapid reversal. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe and turn on post notifications so as not to miss our next video. Do not forget to share with your friends and family.